who stands in a room with a bunch of blokes with their neck with their pants down? <laughs> No, well, seriously, who does that? Well, one would be me. And who's the others? There was a few others that were what there. What sort of club's that? Your trio is made up of Lyndon Dunn as well, who finds himself at the centre of the pantomime, so to speak. How's he finding me in the middle of it? Oh, he's on. <clears throat> Dunny gets a bit of air time. He's reasonably happy with himself. Can I ask you I one question, if it's, if it's possible? You said one. That's your second one. <laughs> <laughs> How many marks of the week have you taken, Jack? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I suppose. A couple of digits, I reckon. They don't call me Jumpin' Jack for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have allowed it to happen at all? It happened. Yeah. Mooney probably done ten times worse. Than <laughs> <laughs> Got off crazy. Bro, I had him as my captain and the super coach. Oh, did you? Yeah. How many did you get? 34 points. <laughs> <laughs> no, other way around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Couldn't give him a nine on that, because you stand in the room with your underpants on. Oh. <clears throat> So we've spoken about him all night and now here he is, Phil Carmen. Welcome to AFL 360. Thank you very much, Jared. Hello, Hello Phil. How are you? Good. What was it like going back over all the stories, Phil, to, um, to compile them in a book? Uh, well, it was pretty interesting. Um, I was a bit hesitant about it initially, but um, after... See, 40-odd guys have contributed to it, mm -hmm. and so it, it's come out pretty well. And actually, when I got a book three weeks ago, I sit on, sat on the coffee desk for two or three days before I had the nerve to sort of open it up. <laughs> yeah. I, wanted to, I wanted to get the reaction of a couple of other people who had read the book. Yep. And once they had read it and said, listen, it's, it's OK, um, then, I, then I read it. How, how, honest, it? how honest is it, Phil? Um, well, it's, it's honest. I sat with Matt Watson, the author, for nearly two days and told him um, just about everything that, that happened. Um, so it was fairly forthright and open about it all, yeah. So, uh, and also the people that have contributed to it have um, been very honest and therefore a lot of things are not complimentary about me in it, Mark. Is there really? That's right. So, yeah. what's, the, uh, what's the one thing that oh. hurt you that wasn't complimentary? Oh, nothing hurts me. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a fairly thick skin. So, no, it was, it was good. And I just appreciate what um, the effort those people have done for it. What, what was the most difficult period to talk about? Phil, do, do, we, do we talk about your private life as well as your your football life? Oh, yes. Um, a bit of the private stuff comes into it. Um, but that's all been pretty good. So it's basically the only negative was all, all footy stuff. And what was the most difficult? Was anything difficult? Oh, to no, talk not about? at all. Because I've, I think I've discussed over the years um, the incidents that have been the most controversial. You know, that's with uh, Graham Carberry. By the way, I, I'm deeply grateful for Graham because it's the only. Um, interview that he has given. So, and he's... Um, he's even, even spoken though, about it in the book, has he? Oh, yeah, it's terrific. Really? Even though our views uh, are different in regard to that incident, I just appreciate um, that he, he gave Matt the, the time to, that he did. You're a figure from <clears> footy's <throat> imagination, I reckon. Um, larger than life, professional, you know, you, you're ahead of your time in a way, a forerunner to what we have now. Did you love it? Do you, do you look back and go, gee, it was a great time playing footy? It certainly was. Um, unfortunately, I was involved in a, in a few incidents that detracted from yep. that. But it was, certainly was a buzz. That's all I wanted to do. I got bored with lots of other things, um, but I thoroughly enjoyed getting out playing the game. There was nothing better, you know, going to the G or at Victoria Park in front of crowds, 30-odd thousand people at Victoria Park. All just focused on the on the game. It was it was yeah, real buzz. Did you get bored with footy playing well, footy, Phil? And I want to say that because <laughs> you're an antagonistic bastard on the on the field, and I say that in the nicest possible way. You could play football at this unbelievable level, even all the way when you got to Sanders and Benigo, but you still had this 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 something in your head that made you antagonise people. People. Did, did, did yeah. you? you oh, you always had a surprise. <laughs> uh, I thought they were antagonistic towards me. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't know. Look, I... As, as you said, I just enjoyed it. It was, a, it was theatre and um, you played to the crowd lots of the time. So it, it, it was certainly it was a buzz. Oh. And I was just unfortunate. I, I only played... I only played 150 games, whereas, you know, somebody that had been around that long should have played over 300, but mm. circumstances just uh, didn't allow me to do that. Play the weekend forecast with us on footy as it is now, Phil. What's your sure thing for the weekend? Cats win mm. tomorrow evening. 
Robbo. I've, had this, I've this worked out, Robbo. I report Port response. It want to be one. Mm. That's all I'll say. Saints response. Same grounds. There would want to be one. Yes, there will be. There needs to be. Most at stake? Um, West Coast. Mm -hmm. Because if they lose... Uh, Cooked? They, yeah, absolutely. Me, Western Bulldogs. <laughs> I'm a bit more specific. <laughs> Jason Johanneson, whose stocks took a bit of a hit out of last week. They did. Doomsday. Worst Doomsday. thing that can happen? Uh, Sydney lose. And finals are definitely out of the... Out of the... So, and so, right, go. Yeah, yeah, and I was just going to appreciate the young bloke upstairs that gave me a hand to do that. <laughs> Sammy looked after Sammy, you well. He's yeah. a good man. Saints lose for me. Yes, yeah. Uh, Richo on Monday. Oh, we've got a bit of a circle going because I've gone Eagles lose. Is, can't be dropping any more at home. Do you get, people still call you fabulous? Oh, absolutely. You like that nickname? Um, I think Lou was sensational. Lou Ridge, Lou Ridge yeah, he yeah, summed it up, yeah, didn't yeah, he? Yeah. Myself and uh, Lethal Lee, you know, he got a couple of pretty good ones, I think. It's great to meet you. Yeah. I can't wait to read it. Well, and um, if people want to purchase it, uh, just go to philcarman.com.au. I have a website, so, um, it, Jared, it, it's a good read. I look it's forward to it. The Phil Carman story. Fabulous, Phil. Phil Carman with us on AFL 360. Robo, well, enjoy Phil. your weekend of footy. I will see, pal. There'll be a lot to talk about come Monday night when our coaches are back at the desk. See you then. This has been a Fox Footy production.